All right, let's get this show on the road. I have been putting this off for far too long. Hello and welcome back. Today's video is going to be kind of a mess for a variety of different reasons. I have filmed this over the course of maybe three weeks. You will see my hair is different lengths and most of it was filmed at night for some reason. And I went back and I looked at the intro that I filmed for it and it was awful. So here we are again, doing it over. If you know anything about me, you know that one of my all time favorite content creators is Rachel Maxey. She is part of the reason why I got into doing this in the first place. She's just so like down to earth and she's just a real person that does things as well as she possibly can. I take a lot of inspiration from her and I have always wanted to make those like stays, the corsety things that she makes all the time for almost all of her projects. So I'm gonna do it. I'm actually gonna get it done this time. I don't know why I want to make one of these. I don't think I'm ever gonna wear it like outside of the house maybe, but you can't wear it if you don't have it. And because I've looked at them for so long and they seem relatively easy to make, I'm gonna just do it. I'm going to make a baby corset or stays. I don't really know what the official term is for this. So I'm going to use both because I am uneducated in things historically fashionable. I did pick up the pattern. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Joann's had them on sale for $2, so I definitely grabbed those with the glee of a child on Christmas morning, and I am very excited to show you guys the progress of this. So if you are ready for just some random chaotic sewing, here you go. First, like any good crafter, I had to spend a not so insignificant amount of time cleaning up my workspace so that I could work at my workspace. But once I had that done, I was able to lay out the pattern and get all the pieces cut out, which I should note takes about as long as cutting out the fabric. To truly honor Rachel Maxey in all of this, I'm using a hobbity brown faux suede and an equally hobbity green wool blend something, because when I imitate someone, I go all in. So I got everything sewed together and I wasn't real sure how I felt about it until I got the green side sewn in as well. I started to feel a little more confident. Welcome to day two. I managed to get everything sewn together, turned right side out, ironed down a little bit and top stitched around the whole thing. So hopefully today will go pretty quickly because really all I need to do is I say all I need to do. What I need to do is get the grommets put in for the lacing up the front and at the straps. And then I'm going to try to do some boning in this for the first time. And I have bought some giant zip ties, but I think these are wide enough to hopefully kind of make a difference. So I want to give that a try, get the bottom finished, and hopefully it will be done. So let's move on to getting the grommets put in and then we'll figure out the boning part as we go and see how that works out. Did you know that when you use patterns, you don't have to guess where to put grommets and buttons and stuff because it's already on the pattern? Well, that's what I learned. And now I know a little more information than I knew before. Because learning is cool. So with everything marked, I got my nifty little hole puncher that I use for leather work and some really cheap grommets that I think I got from Michaels. I got them all put into place and then I smashed the crap out of them. At this point, I hadn't really tried anything on, so I had no idea if it was going to fit, but I was pretty excited about the progress. For some super historical lacing, I pulled out some paracord and cut the center strings out so that I could melt the ends. Kind of like cool little shoelaces, I guess. From there, it was pretty easy to lace it up and try it on. So I have all of the grommets installed. Very attractive paracord detailing. Eventually what I'm gonna do is cover all of these with brown thread so it looks like they're hand sewn in, even though they're not. So now what we need to do is figure out how to put in some boning. Never done that before. 
so it's gonna go really well. But I think what I wanna put in are a few pieces right along the grommets. I don't know if that reinforces them at all, but it'll at least keep the front from like super smushing when I sit down. I think that's really what I'm trying to go for is to give it some more structural integrity for when I bend and kind of flex around. I'm thinking at least one or two on both sides of the grommets and maybe following this princess seam down here and then doing maybe one or two along the sides as well. I don't have any idea how this is gonna turn out, but it's gonna be fine. Ultimately, it's gonna be fine. Let's, uh, let's figure out how that works and do it. Uh -huh. I did in fact sew in those channels I talked about, and I used my cool little knife sharpener to round out the edges so that these things wouldn't poke me in the stomach whenever I sat down. Beautiful. I got two things in already, and A, they go in a lot faster than I thought they would, and B, I'm already really liking kind of the structure that it's giving. It's that flexible kind of structure. So I'm gonna go in and do a couple on the sides and then repeat that for the other half. I don't think I'm gonna put any in the back because I don't think that's necessary. And then I'll get all of that done and maybe try it on and see where we're at. And then try to finish up the bottom and then this will be done. So let's uh, let's work on that part. Dun, 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 dun. So I've got one piece of boning left and then I need to figure out how to finish up the bottom. I don't have any like brown or green bias tape and I don't feel like making it. So I may just put black at the bottom. It's not exactly what I want to do, but it'll be fine for now, I guess. But I'm really, really excited about how this is turning out. I didn't expect it to be quite this polished looking, I guess. Now I haven't tried it on either, so I have no idea how this boning is going to fall or how it's going to affect the booby area, but it'll be fine, what I'm gonna tell myself at least. So I'm gonna try it on, I'm gonna finish the bottom, and I will see you in the reveal. I did in fact finish the bottom with a simple black bias tape because that's what I had on hand, I didn't have to make anything new, and it was instant gratification. So, with all of that, let's look at the final product. Like I say ta-da every time. But really, ta-da, it's like magic. Overall, I am very happy with how this came out. And this is the first boned thing that I've really, I think, ever worn. I am surprised at how comfortable it is. I don't know if I would wanna wear it for an entire day, but just sitting here, it's not bad. I think if I were to do this again, and I will probably do this again, I would like to try to take it down maybe another inch or so, just because the way that it hits, it's like, right where all of the chub starts. And I think that looks okay with skirts, but if I were to wear this with maybe pants or something, I don't think it would be quite as flattering. But other than that, it is far better than I thought it was gonna be. I know that this video was a little chaotic or maybe a lot chaotic, but I do appreciate you sticking around till the end to see the final product. If there's anything that you are thinking about trying out or you just wanna see somebody else kind of work through, let me know and I am happy to experiment on your behalf. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, please go ahead and do that. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Thanks everybody.
Bye. I feel like a tree. <laughs>